I want to make the case that the VAT is a good part of the solution, good as opposed to perfect. Uh, too often in tax reform issues, I think we let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And uh, I just want to emphasize there are, of course, problems with the tax, with the VAT. There are problems with any tax. Uh, but when you look around at the alternatives, uh, the VAT is an attractive way to raise revenues. Uh, some of that revenue can be used for deficit reduction. Some of it can be used to finance tax reform. Uh, very briefly, the, the, Kevin alluded to the VAT in Europe. The VAT is used in about 150 countries uh, around the world. It's not a uh, hypothetical utopian tax. It's a tax that's actually out there doing the job every day. In most countries, it either raises the most amount of revenues or is second only the personal income tax. Uh, there are two ways to structure a VAT. I won't go into the details unless you really want to, but one is called the credit invoice, and it's sort of a transaction by transaction method. The other is a, what's called the subtraction method, and it's, it looks more like the income tax. You sort of add things up at the end of the year and, and, and take uh, tax deductions. Uh, Herman's Keynes business plan, for example, looks an awful lot like a subtraction method VAT. It's not exactly a VAT, but no VAT in the world is exactly a VAT. There's always uh, design mechanisms. But it basically, um, I think we've, tax policy centers come to the conclusion that it's essentially uh, VAT with one or two exceptions. Uh, <coughs> the VAT gets uh, a bad name in a number of circles as uh, uh, there's this famous line about the Larry Summers having said that it's uh, liberals don't like it because it's regressive and conservatives don't like it because it's the money machine and we will get a VAT when uh, liberals realize it's a money machine and conservatives realize it's, it's uh, regressive. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't have to be regressive though and it doesn't have to be a money machine. As Bruce Bartlett has pointed out in his writings, in fact it hasn't really been a money machine uh, it hasn't in the last 25 years. VATs were introduced in the 50s and 60s, and then the 70s, of course, were very inflationary time period, and there was a lot of adjustment of VAT rates in the 70s, but uh, he shows in some recent work that over the last 25 years, oddly enough, since Tax Reform Act of 86, uh, uh, VAT has not been fueling growth of government. The VAT rates have not been rising inexorably. They basically leveled out. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a money machine, although it, obviously one of the goals is to help raise revenue. It doesn't have to fuel eternal growth of government. Uh, some of the arguments uh, that the VAT is a hidden rate, it's this mysterious tax that people never see, uh, is easily resolvable. All you've got to do is <coughs> print the VAT payment on the receipt, just like you print a sales tax payment on the receipt. Uh, it's not... It's, it's not uh, tricky. It's not, it doesn't make it an agent of uh, big government. You just print the receipt. Uh, at the same time, um, the VAT can raise substantial revenue. And if, you, if you're talking about wanting to raise, you know, 2 to 5 percent of GDP in revenue, which is a lot of money, you can't get that from income tax reform without jacking up the rates so high or doing extreme uh, acts to the tax expenditures in there. So if you're talking about significantly realigning revenue in the U.S., or if you're talking about generating enough revenue that you can use some for deficit reform and some to finance tax reform, uh, a VAT is sort of in the Willie Sutton uh, parlance. A VAT is where the money is. Uh, 